NASCAR's Grand National West Series is in Phoenix. Current points leader David Gilliland won here back in January. Last race in this series, Scott Lynch was the winner. Tonight, the challengers are many. It's the Casino Arizona 150 from Phoenix, Arizona. What a beautiful sight, the sun setting in the Arizona desert. It's nighttime in Phoenix. Time to go racing under the lights at Phoenix International Raceway. Tonight, it's the Casino Arizona 150 in NASCAR's Grand National West Series. 150 miles of side-by-side -side racing. And tonight, for the first time ever at this racetrack, the lights are on. Racing under the lights, it should be spectacular. And a very pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Hogwood. We welcome you to the Phoenix area. Pat Patterson is here alongside for our race tonight. And Pat, this racetrack always special to these drivers in the West Series, but I think tonight the juices are flowing just a little extra. Oh, man, they make history tonight, man. They turn it loose under the lights. First time for a lot of these guys they've ever been on this big of a racetrack at night with lights. So it's going to be awfully exciting. Now, when we talk about drivers to watch on the pole is Mike Duncan, the veteran, Spencer Clark, are rookies alongside of him. But right behind them, a guy, Bernie Lamar, I think he's a driver to watch. Well, he's coming off a disappointment at Mesa Marin, but Bernie, I talked to him earlier, he's psyched up about tonight. He's got a great race car, and I think he's out there meaning to get a win here tonight. And we have several drivers in this series tonight from NASCAR's Bush North Series. They have the same rules, same cars, and that guy, watch out for it. Dale Quarterly, he's really tough on a one-mile track. Every time we go to the big tracks, he's good. He won at New Hampshire. He won at Dover. He'd like to get a win here. He was strong in January. Quarterly, the only question we got about him, does he have the muscle under the hood? But he's got the talent in his hands. No question about that. We're ready to go here in Phoenix with the Casino Arizona 150. When we come back, Pat and I will have the starting grid for you. And the green flag is coming up next here on Speed. All right, let's take a look now at our starting grid. On the pole, Mike Duncan. He's got two top fives here. He's never won at this racetrack. Spencer Clark, an 18-year-old rookie on the front row. Row number two, it'll be Dale Cordley out of the North Series and Bernie Lamar coming off a good run at Mesa Marin. Row three, Steve Portengay was a crew chief for this race a year ago. Now, behind the wheel of car number 16, David Gilliland, who won here in January. Row number four, a guy that could get out and get in front fast tonight. That's Johnny Borneman and Ryan Moore, a kid that's real impressive, and he's looking for a ride over there on the East Coast. Back on the fifth row, Californian Andrew Myers, Tim Woods, former football player in car 54. Row number six, starting here tonight at PIR, Rick Rabarski and Jose Luis Ramirez, who's just coming off a bad crash at Sears Point. We'll tell you about that later. And on row seven, Sarah Fisher has moved from the IRL to this West Series, wants to learn stock cars. She starts in the 13th position. And Mike David had some problems earlier today, back a little farther than he would like to start. Now, as we take a look at some of the others, Brett Thompson, he's had some motor troubles here today. Scott Gaylord still looking to get his season going. Yep, Teddy Christopher's racing with us tonight. Nice to see a good modified star out here with the uh, round track guys getting it done and the uh, stock car guys. Scott Lynch had a tough day today, and Charles Price has got a long road to hoe from back there in that uh, starting spot. Then there's Daryl Hare and Ed Watson in the back. Yeah, you remember Scott Lynch, he won here in October, but uh, that team not with a sponsor this year. Jason Small, former Rookie of the Year in this series. He was just 19 years old. Been There's a the mayor. Racer. The mayor's with us yeah. tonight. David Eshelman, former mayor of Fontana, California. Carl Hare, Bobby Hillis in row number 13 in our start starting grid tonight. Rick Craig is out of uh, Utah in row 14. And how about a veteran in row 15? Jack Sellers, who's in his 21st year in this series. And Takuma Koga, who crashed in practice had to go to a backup car and he'll start shotgun on the field as cars are taking their pace laps here and the drivers getting a feel for what it's like under the lights. We might mention, Pat, that all the practice and qualifying today was done in the daylights. Gosh, look how pretty the cars look with those lights on them. All the colors and the numbers and everything. Those guys are sitting in there right now and they're pulling their belts, belts tight. They're spotter. They got a pair of eyes up here on the roof that are going to help them get around the racetrack. We'll talk about some more of that right now. But this is the, the most exciting time of this race. Get those belts good and tight. Make sure you clear out that carburetor and you're going to be ready when that green flag comes out here, Mike. 
right because we're going for 150 fast laps at the fastest little one mile that you'll ever want to see. This is a great place to race. And if you're a crew chief, what are you telling that driver? Just get her done. Yeah, just be patient. <laughs> yeah. Be patient. Get her done here tonight. Take your time. And the lights are off. And, boy, I tell you what, this is going to be good, Mike. All right, the pace car getting ready to pull down onto the pit lane. The field is bunched up. It's Mike Duncan and Spencer Clark who will lead him to the green. The crowd rises on its feet, and we are underway with the Casino Arizona 150. And Duncan, the veteran, as they head into the first turn, takes the lead. But look at that rookie on the outside. Spencer Clark hanging in there on the first lap. 32 is Dale Quarterly. We understand Takuma Koga passed before he uh, took the green flag. He's getting a black flag because of it. You've got to wait till you get past the start finish line before you can do any passing. That's a NASCAR rule, and that's why. Uh, the couple will have to come in and probably have a pass-through penalty here, but uh, everybody else looks like they got a pretty good start, Mike. That's David Gilliland and Ryan Moore in that 74, and Mike Duncan's opened up a little bit of a lead now. Gilliland in fifth, Moore in sixth. Ryan Moore out of the North Series. He'll be racing some for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated this year in the Bush Series. His dad, Kelly Moore successful driver and pretty much given up the seat a little bit to concentrate on his son's racing and Gilliland as we told you bumped the wall in practice one here in January. Yeah I mentioned earlier that Ryan Moore is looking for a ride on the East Coast of course he has a ride in the Bush North Series but he wants to be in one of those Bush cars full time uh, in the years to come so part of what he's doing right now is auditioning for all of that. 43-year-old Mike Duncan in that number nine car. He was the series champion just one year ago. Former minor league baseball player out of Bakersfield, California. I'll tell you what, the fastest car on the racetrack's at 32 right there, Dale Quarterly. He's coming on pretty good, and he's starting to run down Mike Duncan. Duncan kind of got out in front there on the uh, initial green flag, but Quarterly's coming like a house of fire. Place has been very impressive here early. David Gilliland, the 88, is fifth. Ryan Moore is sixth right now. Ooh, and uh, Ryan just got He's into the 88. Boy, he did. He Look just at got the into the 88 right there, and. Uh, Man, I hope that's not hitting Gilliland's tire there in the rear. No, it doesn't look like it is. Pat, I'm not sure he's going to be able to stay out with that damage. Ryan Moore trying to take the fifth position, and he does. But watch what happens as he gets by David Gilliland. Well, Gilliland looks like he, he kind of got up the racetrack there just a little bit. Car got a little loose on him. Ryan trying to anticipate exactly how close he could get, and when he gets right beside the car, he just didn't quite have it turned. Gilliland coming down on the pit road. That's lucky that wasn't a, a big wreck there. Let's see. What a tough break, Pat, for David Gilliland. One here in January. Points leader coming into this race. You know, Mike, I'm having a hard time figuring out exactly. I mean, I can see, obviously, the sheet metal damage on the car, but I'm still curious as to why he's moving that slow coming down to get this fixed. There's something else wrong with that car besides besides what you saw right there. And they're taking the hood pins out of that. Yeah, they're going under the hood. He's got, he's got motor problems. What a tough day it's been, though, Pat, for David. He uh, brushed the wall, and that was the result of a cut-down tire. Now... Well, they can fix this little problem back here. That's that's not the issue. The issue is under the hood. What's going on in, under the hood is the problem. Rookie of the year last season, David Gilliland, 29 years old. He's going to try to run the Bush race here this weekend. The only one in this field who will do it. Meanwhile, back up front, Mike Duncan trying to hold off Dale Quarterly. Duncan, who took the lead on the first lap, he's our pole sitter. I'll tell you what, Bernie Lamar is coming on pretty quick back there, too. You see the yellow car is the third one in the frame. There's the uh, uh, yellow car of Bernie Lamar. He's doing a good job, and he's drawing, he's drawing up pretty close to the 32. Off to a good start here. Bernie Lamar driving a car that is owned by Kevin Harvick. That car prepared at Harvick's shops in Kernersville, North Carolina. Bernie, 24 years old, hails from Sacramento. 
regional late model champion. He and I sat in the trailer and talked for just a little while before we got going here tonight. And Bernie said, man, at Mesa a couple weeks ago, it was just so easy. He was working the car, just wasn't working it very hard at all. He said, I think I can do the same thing tonight, Pat. And it sure looks like he's got a great handling race car at this point, Mike. Well, while his car is handling well, David Gilliland sits on pit road with more. Here's Candace. That's right, Mike. I don't have that much to report. As you can see, the guys are continuing to work on his car at this juncture. At this point, all we know is that he doesn't have any power, so they are, are continuously working on that in hopes of getting him back out there. Yeah, kind of hard to uh, back out on the racetrack without yeah. the motor. And, and, Mike, I wonder when when Ryan got into him coming off the corner, if maybe the, the motor didn't hiccup just a little bit right exactly. then. Exactly. And that, you know, that may have been one of the reasons that, that Ryan kind of misjudged to, you know, where he was on the racetrack. The car might have jumped sideways just a little bit there, but unfortunate for David Gillen. He is such a talent, and uh, this is going to be a long night. Well, David Gilliland, who has a bright career ahead of him, no matter what happens to him tonight. Uh, that doesn't look good. I don't think they can get it started. But what really is going to hurt him is in the points chase. As yeah, that's we said, he came in as the points leader. And, they got know. their heart set on that championship. And, and, folks, there aren't that many races in this series, unlike the Nextel Cup and Bush Series where there's 30-plus races. And you don't have that. You've got about a third that many races here. So every one of these is so incredibly uh, vital to win in a championship. You know, one DNF can, can really knock you out. Say, those DNFs, something you can't afford. That's what Mike Duncan last year in winning the championship. He was so consistent all year long. Johnny Borneman working on Timmy Woods there. Borneman in the eighth, eighth yeah. position. Woods running seventh right now. Tim Woods who played football in college. Oh, and Timmy, Timmy's uh, congratulating uh, the eight car on passing him there or something out the window. <laughs> he didn't look too happy with Johnny. Johnny Borneman only runs a limited schedule. Last time he ran a full schedule was 2002, finished fourth in points that year. As you said, Pat, he is capable of winning this race. Raced here in January, finished 15th. I'm impressed with Jose Luis Ramirez, man. He's looking good right there running with Woods and, and Borneman in the 77. Mike Davis starting to move up the field, running 11th now. He's in that yellow two car. Mike Davids had some good finishes here. Finished fourth here in January. Yeah, we got a little pit strategy thing, you know, working uh, this race, and we did in January as well. There were a bunch of guys up front that uh, either were just about out of fuel or some of them actually ran out of fuel, and it really juggled the finish of the uh, January race. So it's going to be interesting if the same situation occurs tonight with everybody trying to estimate their fuel mileage. That race in January, by the way, just 100 laps, 100 miles. This 150. And Mike Duncan, who won the pole, led the first lap, still leads on lap 17. Man, I can't get over how good this racetrack looks. Must go, and, and these guys did a great job. This racetrack just looks pristine at night. Once Cordley moved into second place, able to gain a lot of ground on Mike Duncan. More on that, let's go down to Candace Kruger. Well, guys, I'm here in Mike Duncan's pit, and you know, five of the 18 West Series races have been won by Bud Pole winners. Now, Mike Duncan is on the pole. He has never won here at Phoenix. I spoke to a member of his crew, and I asked how the car is running. They said Mike has not said a word, which is a great sign. So hopefully he may have a car to win tonight. Well, he has a one here, but he has two top fives, and of course, he's got one of the best guys turning wrenches on that car, Bill Sedgwick, a great driver in his own right, the crew chief on that oh, night. Oh, and there's Sarah Fisher, who is backed into the wall. Sarah Fisher, who has not had the season she would have liked in the first two races. Not going to have a long night here at Phoenix. Shorten that car considerably. Well, Sarah's, Sarah's had a tough day to see if we can get any kind of a replay here. Uh, ooh, I'm not so sure that Miss Sarah didn't have a little help there. I'm not sure who what that exactly that was behind him. I thought it was 0-8, but I'm not sure about that, so we'll have to... Sarah, Sarah Fisher, former driver in the IRL, drove in the Indy 500, got some serious damage 
on that Chevy Monte Carlo. And Richard Childers here tonight, taking a special eye to Sarah Fisher. So I know she's a little disappointed right now. Caution is out on the racetrack, and we'll take a break here. Mike Duncan, your leader. Dale Courtley from the North Series running second. And the Casino Arizona 150, Sarah Fisher backed into the wall. This is our first caution of the night. You see her crew trying to bang out some of that sheet metal there. I didn't see any real tire rub there, Pat. She may be able to continue. Yeah, I, I just, from where she was at on the speedway when she went up and got the wall there, either something something let go on that car or she got some help uh, heading up in that direction, one or the other. But either way, it's a tough deal for her. Tough break for the young lady from Indianapolis, Indiana, Sarah Fisher. Who's really trying to, she she loves racing stock cars, just has to get seat time, has to get some experience. So much different from uh, open wheel driving. And it's a tall order to come out of open wheel cars into these cars and make that transition. Let's, uh, let's see if we catch up with the leader on the racetrack. And Mike Duncan's done a good job here from the get go. Mike, first of all, you got me up there? Got you. Go ahead. You look like you just got a great race car, Mike. Tell me about the racetrack and what does it look like under these lights for the first time? Hey, well, it's, uh, it's a, I got a good seat for one of them, obviously. Uh, really good at night. Uh, there's no glare off the seats or anything anymore. Uh, I think it's going to make for a good show for the fans. And sure, uh, sure, nice racing in this condition. Sure looks like your car is handling on both ends of the racetrack. Are you pretty happy with it? Bill, uh, Bill Sedgwick, my crew chief, and all the Lucas Oil guys have done a great job. This car is really good. Hopefully it just stays consistent all night. We weren't sure what it was going to do when the track cooled down, but so far so good. Hopefully we can stay up front. All right, Mike, thanks for talking to us, and uh, good luck here with the rest of it. Yeah, and I just saw the 0-8 of Scott Lynch come in on the pit road. Looked like it was some sort of NASCAR penalty as he uh, as, uh, came in for a stop and go and is pulled back now. There's the 0-8 car we were talking about. And, I, you know, I visited with... I visited with Lynch earlier, and he really had a tough race car here today. He's not had any handle on it whatsoever. Tough, tough day for Scott Lynch. We told you uh, that David Gilliland has pulled his car behind the wall. Candace Kruger is down there with him. Well, Mike, it looks like David Gilliland's car has broken a camshaft, so they are done for the night. Actually, his crew is getting ready to push the car back over to the hauler. They said they're going to go ahead and head on home. Unfortunately, calling it an early night for these guys. What a tough day. I, I think you're right, Pat. I think that motor hiccups right there, and that, that's what caused Ryan Moore to get into him. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. It, it, it just lost power right there and uh, checked up because Ryan, Ryan did, you know, he did all he could to get around him, and his car was... Pace car is pulling down onto the pit lane. We're ready to go back. Green flag racing here at PIR. And Mike Duncan is into the gas. Sellers not able to get a lap back. Guy that's looking hungry is in that yellow car. That's Bernie Lamar. He had a good restart there. But these guys got a, about a car length on him. Pat, at some point, you start thinking about taking tires. You've got four that you can put on the car, two allowed for each stop. I think these guys will start coming in. Oh, it'll be. I think it'll be a while. They they got a lot of a lot of running to do on these tires before they'll start heading to the pit road. I think it's going to be quite a while. But we're going to have ourselves a good race here for a minute on this uh, third fourth spot. Ryan Moore is really drawing a beat on Bernie Lamar. As you uh, see, there's Ryan and of course Steve Portgay back there in the six uh, 16 car. Talking about Ryan Moore, who's out of Scarborough, Maine. His dad, R.C. Moore sponsoring the car. Ryan Moore said he was just sick of hanging out. Been hanging out all winter. The North Series doesn't start until mid-May. So he talked the boys into heading to Phoenix. Worst thing a race car driver can do is sit home and watch TV, I can tell you that. Uh, he's been working uh, down in Mooresville at the DEI shops. That's even worse. That means every week everybody's going to race but you. <laughs> That's the worst possible scenario. Well, this weekend, Ryan Moore is oh, where out. he loves. Caution. Caution is out for the second time tonight. I think somebody spun off a of turn, too. There it is. There is Scott Gaylord in the uh, double zero. What a tough year for Scott Gaylord. 
Last year, he had eight top five finishes. So far this year, he finished 22nd the first race at Phoenix, 20th in Bakersfield, and this night's not, not starting out well for him at all. It's been that kind of season for the double O car. But so far, it's been a great night for Mike Duncan, your leader. And we're watching it under the lights. First time ever at this racetrack. Gorgeous sight. And a tough night already for David Gilliland, for Sarah Fisher, for Scott Gaylord, who has brought out this caution. There's Sarah Fisher. Let's go down to Candace Kruger, who is with Sarah Fisher. Well, Mike, the guys were working very diligently to work on the car in hopes of getting Sarah back out there to get some more laps completed. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Sarah's taking the steering wheel off. It looks like her night may have ended. Apparently, what happened was she got into the 08 car out there. A lot of rear end damage here. Let me see if I can get a word with her real fast. Sarah, tell us what happened out there. Well, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear. Um, you know, well, welcome to stock car racing. I, I think a guy got a little bit up into me and uh, in my left rear corner while I was turning in and you know it goes from there so you know it's like this world's completely different and I got to learn every single angle so it's a new experience it just it stinks because we we had such a good car and Domino's was on board and it just it's something we got to learn and get better at. Well we're sorry to hear that your night has ended early but we're glad that you're okay. Mike. All right Candace thanks a lot in. Tough night for Sarah. She's right. A lot to learn about this stock car racing. Mike Duncan, a veteran, learned his trade on the short tracks in Bakersfield, California, and he has led from lap one, your pole sitter. But I think Dale Cordelly and Bernie Lamar still might have a little something for Mike Duncan before this is all said and done. I tell you, that last exit of the corner, you saw Duncan coming off a of turn four, and his car really chased up the racetrack. And uh, he better hope that that's not the case again because you give away a lot of time right there. Uh, you know, it looked like to me his car just didn't want to turn when he came off of the corner up here, but he sure sure got some horsepower on there because he pulled away from these guys again down the front stretch. There you see the 55 of Ed Watson. Runs a lot in the Elite Series Northwest Division. in the 15th position right now in that 55 car. Look at the battle behind him. You know, Mike David hasn't been running that well tonight. He had a tough time. They broke a rocker arm in their motor and had to go to a backup motor in practice. And they've just had a tough day all day today. Bernie Lamar there in that yellow car starting to put the heat on uh, quarterly. Bernie Lamar who will run just a few races this year in that 33 car. Lives in North Carolina now. Works on the car during the week at Kevin Harvick Incorporated. Works for works for one of my old buddies, Rick Corelli. Does a lot of work in uh, spots for Harvick, and uh, they got a good group of people back there assembled. This the battle for sixth position. The young rookie Spencer Clark on the outside in the 26, and Tim Woods, very impressive here tonight so far. Somehow or another, Johnny Vorderman has gotten back behind Tim Woods again, and that's the guy that he had problems with earlier. So let's see if Vorderman can clear the 54 without any problems this time. Vorderman in the eight. There's Timmy Woods on the outside, both uh, in the uh, 54 there, and Vorderman's going to try to get a nose under him. This will be the battle for sixth place. Oh, he came so close to hitting Tim. Woo! That was tight. Tim Woods, only top five in this series, came last summer in a race in Monroe, Washington. He's one position away of getting to the top five here tonight, but still a long way to go. And he's got, as you said, Johnny Borneman putting a lot of pressure on him. Borneman, whose dad was a pretty darn good racer in his yeah, time. Very good racer. Talked to Johnny just a little while ago as well, and. Uh, very happy with his race car. Thought it was a better race car than the one he led a lot of laps here with um, earlier in the year, in January. Now Dale Cordley starting to put a little more pressure on our leader, Mike Duncan. Cordley, as we said, from the Bush North Series, and their season will start May 15th in Lee, New Hampshire. 
races as well. And, Lap car. Uh, Whoa, look at that move. Did you how see about Cordelini? He's going to take the lead. That was Bernie great. Lamar on the inside as well of Mike Duncan. And lap traffic had everything to do with that. Cordelini takes the lead. We have a new leader for the first time tonight. I think Duncan looked up in turn four and went, what in the world is in front of him? Dove to the right. He's lucky. They lucky both of them didn't hit this lap car. Hello. I'll go this way. You go that way. Oh, and of my course, goodness. Cordley had to really let his car unwind there coming down the straightaway. But that's that was a nice piece of driving and our first uh, lead change. That lap car to Kuma Koga. I told you he is significantly slower than a lot of cars in the field. Had to go to a backup car. Now Bernie Lamar putting some pressure on Mike Duncan. I think it might take a lap or two just to recover things after an episode like that, Pat. Well, you know, I, I told you from the green flag, I saw Duncan's car kind of chase up the racetrack off of four, which, I mean, that's that's what that's where the car, car wants to go. And it was at exact, that exact same spot that they met that lap car. So I think that's probably a, a you know, Partly, the car didn't want to handle right there, and plus the lap car was in the way at the exact spot. So, Duncan looks like he's regrouping and uh, coming back after Quarterly, though. Yeah, Mike Duncan doesn't want to run second right I now. I wonder if something went wrong with Quarterly's car. And now another lap car, that of Rick Craig. Oh, this and is Duncan good. not able to take advantage. The five car of Rick Craig. Now, folks, let me tell you something. You might have thought there was a lot of room out there on the racetrack, but if I took you down there and stacked three or four cars across from each other, you'd wonder how all four of them got down in the middle of the straightaway. It's just not that wide. Well, this is a great race up front right yeah, now. The 32 is quarterly, the 33 Lamar. Nine is Mike Duncan, and watch out for that 74. That is Ryan Moore. <laughs> for the lead. It's Lamar on the inside, and the youngster wants to show something to the wily old veteran right here. And if it's the first time you've watched some of this kind of racing, watch their hands when they get in the corner. See how they're jerking that wheel back and forth? The more you do that, the more you're wearing the tires out. And while those two guys are having fun up front, you see that Lucas car in the back starting to sneak up on them? That's what happens when you get to racing hard up there. All of a sudden, it becomes a party that everybody wants to be in on. He's got the best seat around, and I'm sure that Mike Duncan says, you guys just go ahead and battle. Oh, 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 oh. man, the 33 just about got, just about lost it right there. That could have been a major wreck. Nice job for Bernie for hanging on to it right there. Look at these guys go at it. Boy, great racing up at the front of this field. Bernie Lamar in the 33, Dale Cordelli in the 32, and lurking right behind him, Mike Duncan, the defending series champion. You know, it's funny, too, because I think Ryan Moore is backed off at the appropriate amount of distance just in case these three guys get sideways up in front. Yeah, Ryan Moore has driven a very smart race here tonight. Well, we're only a third of the way through this, so, you, you know, you don't want to get up here and make a mistake early and then pay for it. There you see Lamar, and he's just got a great race car. It looks like the quarterly kind of backed off and went, you know, I don't need to use up any more of these tires trying to catch this guy right now. I mentioned, too, that Bernie Lamar's crew chief is Lance Dieters, a name that has been around the Bush Nextel Cup Series. Did a good job of helping Bernie set up this car. Bernie Lamar, now your leader, in a car owned by Kevin Harvick. Yeah, Cordelis' car is starting to... Looks like it's getting really tight on him. Looks like that uh, he's having some problems driving that 32. I think Mike Duncan's going to take advantage of that here in just a minute. And I would think two pads start around 50 laps into this race. That tire wear becomes a factor. Yeah, you're right, Mike. I mean, they're, they're feeling it right now. These tires have probably dropped off as much as a, a, a half a second to a second and a half. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of, of distance there. But but they could have fallen off, at, you know, that much since the start of this one. That six car, the lap car there. That's the mayor. David oh, Eshelman. Kind of a mess here. These lap cars are really in the wrong spot. Duncan's going to lose a lot of time. He got boxed in by the six. He got stuck behind the five. He had to get out of the throttle and on the brake. And, man, he just lost 20 car lengths to uh, uh, second place. Well, the five car there, 
Rick Craig, he'd never been in one of these cars before last year, and you see him going by the five there. Bought a car and went racing. It's one of the great things about this sport. You're certainly able to do that. At 16, a Porton Gay is starting to get a little racy here, too. He's, he's trying to catch up so that he doesn't get too far behind these front three guys. He's might, up to third spot. Right, we might mention that Porton Gay has passed Ryan Moore. Fourth spot, I mean. Okay, and is in fourth, and Moore is down to five. Tim Wood still runs in sixth. And up front, here's Bernie Lamar. You're watching NASCAR Grand National West Series on Speed. We'll be back in just a moment. You know, since we started, because you look at the best lap they run, and, and over there at the laps they're running right now. Caution is on the racetrack. Yellow is out, and that is Craig. We were talking about him before. Yep, go Very go. inexperienced oh, driver. No, He's funny. He there's Johnny Borneman as well. He is caught up in it. Oh. Johnny Borneman in the eighth car. Oh, my goodness. Man, oh, man. What in the world happened here? And Rick Craig in the five, able to fire it, but I'm not sure that Borneman's going to be able to. I'm hoping that the other side of that car, which we can't see, isn't damaged. But some bad news, Pat. I saw a lot of smoke coming out of the hood of that car. There's Rick Craig out of Draper, Utah. Coming to the attention of his crew. Now let's tell people that, that most likely what's going to happen is the leader's going to come in the first time, change the right side tires, go back out around, come back in, and change the left side tires. That should be the sequence of events we have. One of the reasons they do that, folks, they don't let them change all four, because it costs more money to have more guys to be able to change all four at one time. And it's also a safety thing for guys that don't spend a lot of time uh, doing pit stops in this series. But uh, everybody's ready to try them out now. Lamar. Cordelly, Duncan, Cordelly in his pit. His crew going to work on the right side. And believe it or not, folks, this could be the move of the race to see who comes off this pit road first and uh, gets gets back around and gets those second set of tires. Cordelly's got his already. Had a little trouble with the rear tire on the Cordelly tire change. Bernie Lamar has his crew going to work. And Cordelly Looks like he's going to get out first. And again, that does not surprise me because Dale's got a little bit more experience, um, you know, on these bigger tracks, and his guys that he does have working with him also has it. But I think, I think Maybe Bernie, Bernie Lamar, may have Bernie got, him. got out first. Yeah, Lamar got him. So Bernie, Bernie Lamar him. gets out first, and Dale Cordley's crew also did a nice job. And they go race back around, and get some more tires. There's a speed limit on this pit road, and the NASCAR officials are watching these cars as they come down the pit road. So as a driver, you know, you gotta be real careful here. Don't get going too fast on this pit road or you'll really mess yourself up. You'll have to come back in for a penalty and lose all that track position as the leaders come down the pit road again. Lamar is coming back in, quarterly back in. The nine of Duncan is in, Ryan Moore, Portengay, Scott Lynch, all of your leaders are going to come and now they'll take left side tires. Critical pit stop. Ryan Moore, that's a good stop. Or excuse me, Dale Corley with a good stop there. Work being done there on the number nine car, Mike Duncan. There goes Bernie Lamar. Boy, taking a little while on the Duncan car. Oh, they. They've got a problem on the left rear. They've either got a lug nut hung under there. They just got it off. Oh, this is killing Duncan as far as track position goes. They got something that hung up down there. Maybe Candace can figure it out for us, but they either got a lug stuck in there or um, some other problem that uh, changed that left tire. And you can just see the frustration on these guys' face. What a tough break for Mike Duncan. Oh. We talked all night of the pit stops. Might not win you the race. The Scott Lynch, who won here in October. Now up to fifth in the 08. 
Lynch, who won the last race in this series at Bakersfield at Mace Marin Raceway. And you notice no sponsor on that car. They are no, still looking and they are yeah. searching hard. And as Scott said, the money getting a little short. I guarantee you, nobody's more surprised than he is where he's at on the racetrack right now. Candace, what about the 55? Did he take four or did he take two as we get ready to go back to green? Well, Mike, you were right. He did only take two tires, okay. two two tires on the right side, and they also had a hard time getting fuel in the car as well. They're going to have to bring him in in the next caution to get some more fuel in there. Okay, so uh, I doubt Ed Watson's going to be able to hang on very much with Portley and Mont Lamar with four tires. And we're back under green now, lap 73. We're going to have ourselves one big traffic jam here in a minute. Mike Duncan in the ninth position. Steve Portengay, 10th. So Duncan's got some ground to make up. Yeah, and there's a whole gaggle of them back there off of turn four that really, these guys that are still on the lead lap back there have got to be real careful picking their way back through the field. Brad Thompson, your leader in the 61. Thompson, who won at Bakersfield last fall, his first race ever that he won in this series. Did have four top fives last year and only ran 10 races. And Quarterly did a nice job of clearing Scott Gaylord there. That's the 32 that just got around that orange and white car, as did Bernie Lamar, whose car didn't quite want to turn that corner. Thompson is that silver 61 is out in front out of Jerome, Idaho. Finished 23rd in this race back in January. And you were talking about that mess. How about fifth, sixth, seventh? Clark is right now in fifth place. Ryan Moore right behind him in the 74. And we haven't mentioned young Andrew Lewis very much, but Lewis now with a top 10 run. Mike Duncan just passed him. Andrew yeah. Lewis just 18 years old and he a had senior a lot of high school. He had a lot of fun last time he raced here, didn't he? Absolutely. Really Finished 16th here in January. Dale Cordley now running second and setting his sights on that silver car of Brett Thompson. Bernie Lamar right behind him. I'll tell you folks again, if it's maybe your first time watching with us, four tires are better than two tires. And Mr. Cordley is going to demonstrate that for us momentarily. It won't take many more laps before he'll show you why four tires are better than two tires. Right now, last lap, Dale Cordley two tenths of a second quicker than Brett Thompson. So, not, you're right, it's not going to take him long at all. No, Scott Lynch is running fourth right now as you go back in the pack a little bit. Clark in fifth, and look at Port Gay and the nine car of Duncan. Gaylord's there mixing it up as well. He's a lap car, the double zero. And the 18 of Andrew Lewis, the youngster, the high school senior in that black 18. Yeah, the 60, 61 car, as, as we talked about earlier, he only took right side tires. That's that's the reason that uh, he's going to back up here in a minute. We'll get a new leader. But what about Portgate and that blue Napa car? That was a great move he put on Duncan down there. Gutsy move, too, because that was really a jumbled up hole of cars trying to uh, find him a spot. Did a nice job of it. Steve Portgate, who tried his hand as a crew chief last year, spent some time with Tim Woods, also with Sean Woodside. Says he loves being back in the seat of a car. Look at Duncan. Duncan's start trying to figure out a new way around the racetrack. He's hunting for a line, as they say, trying to move around on the racetrack to find a quicker way. Here goes Portgay under the 26. That's the battle for sixth place. Ryan Moore is in fifth. That white 74. Back in the pack of way, there's Jason Small in the 21. Rick Ruzbarski in the 51. Brett Thompson's been pretty impressive. Able to hold on to that lead with just those two tires. Well, don't get me wrong. Two tires will get you a lot faster lap than you were on those four that were worn out, but it, it'll be short-lived. I mean, he'll, he'll eventually back up to the leaders here, and they'll eventually get that position if everything just stays equal the way it is right now. Brett Thompson is a guy who's come over a lot of hard luck in his career. Now it's Portengay. Working Clark, and as we told you earlier in the broadcast, Clark, who started on the front row, only 18 years old, out of Las Vegas, Nevada. 
And Portengay, the veteran, just put the position on him. That was the battle for sixth place. So Portengay now sixth, Clark seventh. And there is Mike Duncan running eighth. Bernie Lamar trying to get by Dale Quarterly. The battle for second place. Wow, that's I thought, two, for, I thought for a moment Quarterly all yeah. might let him go, but no, no way. No, that's two pretty equally matched cars right there. Those guys are having a ball racing with each other right now. It's fun, folks. When you get in a car and you got somebody like Quarterly or, or a Lamar that are as good a race car driver as they are, and you can run door to door with them and swap the lead and so forth, that's a lot of fun. Dude, those guys are having a great time out there. We'll be back with more Grand National West Series racing on speed. Bernie Lamar last lap fastest car on the racetrack. And the black flag has just been displayed to Mike Duncan. Ooh, Bernie's car get about broke loose on him right there. Slid the front tires there. Good Here's Ryan on. Moore, position on Dale Cornelay, the battle for fourth. Two North Series drivers going at it, and Ryan Moore takes the position away. Well, important guy just jumped in the middle of that one too there. He caught up real fast, and those guys got racing with each other. And we're about to have a battle for the lead right here. Is going to be sick about all of this as Bernie Lamar takes the lead away as Mike Duncan now comes down on pit road to the attention of Bill Sedgwick and his crew, but may not be a lot those guys can do. Yeah, maybe Candace can find out if there's when he gets down that way if, if there's a, a chance of continuing or not once they get a chance to kind of assess the problem. They're going to go ahead and change tires. I think they just want to get up under it so they can see see what's uh, going on with the rear end. NASCAR officials going to want to look under there and make sure nothing's leaking before they let him go back out. And as you just heard, he cut the motor off. Not a good sign. Oh, There's Port Port Gay. Port Gay. Oh, and Dale Portley, after those pit stops, not near as strong as he was in the first part of this race. Well, Port Gay now in the top five, running fifth. Quarterly kicked back to the sixth position. You know, Mike, we saw that him and the 74 kind of running with each other, and, and, and it looked like Dale's car was getting real loose on him at that time. Portage just took advantage of the same thing there. Brett Thompson holding on to second place. Scott Lynch running third. And here is Scott Lynch trying to get by Thompson for second place. Scott Lynch, 26 Whoa, years old. Hang on, really hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Brett Thompson turns around and he does he hit the wall. What a great nice job by job. Brett Thompson. He doesn't hit a thing. Oh, my goodness. Caution is out. Brett right. Thompson went spinning, and you were holding your breath, thinking that car was going to crunch the wall, but it did not. Great job of driving by Brett Thompson. And caution is out once again. Oh, my goodness. Watch this again. I don't think Lynch touched him. Nope, he just broke loose. Wow, what a ride. We're ready to go, green flag racing. Just a couple laps away from 50 to go. Bernie Lamar takes the green. Now the question is, what does Scott Lynch have for him? Lynch in the 08. Certainly knows how to get around this racetrack. One here back in October. Lynch with seven series wins to his credit. How about Scott Lynch was the champion and the rookie of the year in 03? Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Scott Lynch told me before this race, he said, Pat, I'll be lucky to finish this race. So nobody, and I said this earlier, is going to be any more surprised if he gets a checkered flag tonight or a second or third place finish, that guy's going to be ecstatic when he gets out of the race car. And how about Ryan Moore? Moore won second place. He's in that white 74 from the Bush North Series. Moore, who did not win a race last year, had seven top fives, finished sixth in the points. Says his goal this year, and he is going all out. He wants that North Series championship. And this race tonight, he says, really the beginning of his season. 
a shakedown for his crew. Horton Gay's car is all over the place. That uh, blue and yellow car right behind Ryan Moore. He is really trying to hustle around there and find himself a line. Two or three times he's just been in some weird positions on the racetrack, but he continues to hold on to the spot. So, I mean, Steve's doing all he can do. And, Pat, one of the great things about this series is it is now beginning to be a developmental series of drivers, and we have two 18-year-olds who are running in the top 10 right now, Spencer Clark and Andrew Lewis. As you see, Ryan Moore trying to get up and race Scott Lynch for second place. Man, Bernie is just checking out on him here. Bernie Lamar, definitely the class of the field right now. He knew early on he was going to be tough. I thought he was very smart in biding his time, waiting to make a move for the front. Bernie Lamar, who started racing when he was five years old. Oh, the O2's got a problem on the racetrack. That is Carl Haar. He has been in and out of the pits all day long today, and you see there's some real damage on the front end of that, and the caution is out again. May have had a tire go down either way. Looks like he whacked the wall up there with the uh, nose first, the right side nose. There it is. You're watching NASCAR Grand National West Series on speed. We'll be back in just a moment. It's on the inside. And if you're joining us late, David Gilliland, who won this race in January, went out early with a broken camshaft. DNF's going to really hurt him in the points chase. Green flag is back out of Phoenix. Lap 108. 42 laps remain here. Boy, what a jump Barney Lamar got at the start. And Ryan Moore in that 74 car knows that I have got to get around this 08 if I want to have any shot at winning this race. He's got to go. And Fort Gay's thinking the exact same thing right now in the blue car. Those three cars behind the leader know that they have got to hang on to the lead, and each one of them knows they got to get hungry right now, and they got to get it done. they got to get around these guys. He's talking to Ryan Moore today before the race, and he says, you know, last year, as he tries to put a position on Scott Lynch, now backs off just a little bit, and here comes Parton Gay on the outside. They may have made a little contact. Getting racy up there. Ryan Moore was talking about last year, and he says, you know, my dad and I were working out of the same shop, two cars, and now we've decided to be a one-car team again, and that has really, really helped us. Well, Kelly Moore has been such a great part of stock car racing in the northeastern United States and uh, has so many. I, I'm fortunate to see him win. In fact, we saw him win on, on, on this channel. I mean, we, we have seen Kelly do so much. And uh, to see him get back behind his son now and for those guys to be working together and not racing each other, um, that's cool. He knows that his kid's got a shot at the big time. Right. And he's willing to, to do what he's got to do as a dad now, not as another race car driver, to help make that happen. And I think that's cool. Meanwhile, Bernie Lamar's lead is really increasing. Yeah, I saw Kelly, who's here at the uh, racetrack. He's got a cast on his foot. You know, you talk about how he still likes racing. I said, how did you do that, Kelly? I said, snowmobiling. Always racing something. We heard Bernie Lamar talking to Pat just a few moments ago, talking about how happy he was with that car, and it's showing on the racetrack. Well, and these three guys behind him kind of made a mistake. They, they went after each other so hard, which is, you know, I mean, that's, well, we're getting down to crunch time, and then they got to do that. But what happened was, is they raced each other so hard for three laps, Mike, the leader got away. And Bernie's gone again. And if he's able to get that win tonight, don't you think it would be neat with Kevin Harvick here, his car owner? Well, Harvick's on a roll here lately. He's got Hornaday in victory lane with the truck. He's got his Bush cars winning. He got himself into victory lane a, a week or two ago, and Bristol, and you know, Harvick, and Delana have really got a good organization there, and uh, got Tony Stewart driving his other Bush cars. So, I mean, 
this is just a, a group of people that are on a roll. And like I say, I think they're secret weapons. My buddy Rick Corelli out of out of Denver, Colorado, and uh, he does a great job of all kinds of stuff there for that organization. So. Yeah, those West Coast guys have uh, descended upon Kernersville, North Carolina, in the shops at Kevin Harvick Incorporated, where Bernie Lamar's car tonight is prepared. Scott Lynch, as you see, holding on to second place. Steve Portengay behind them in that blue and yellow car, number 16, running fourth. And Dale Quarterly hanging in there fifth. Well, I give Portengay credit again. He keeps looking for different lines around the racetrack to hopefully pick up a little bit of time on these guys. You know, he saw how much he punished his tires there in that initial get-go uh, on that last green flag. And uh, this guy out in front's just setting a pace that uh, doesn't give anybody time to, uh, you know, to try to catch the leader. And there is Mr. Harvick. Kevin Harvick, that's the team owner. Driver of the 29 car for Richard Childress on the Nextel Cup Series. Yeah, pretty serious look on his face then, didn't he? He's all business when it comes to cashing checks and making the cars go fast. I can guarantee you that. He's got to be happy, though, with what his young driver, Bernie Lamar, has done so far tonight. I think we're going to have another battle here for second very shortly. Ryan Moore in the 74 car. Well, Mike, we're 117, 118, 118 laps down here in a 150-lap race. We have about 30 to go, and, you know, you can't waste any more time if, you, if there's any, if you've got anything to show you need to be you need to be getting it ready to go right now and ryan moore has really stepped it up Moore, who as we said now is working for dei he will go testing for dale earnhardt incorporated next week well bernie lamar out in front and now Ryan Moore making second. the move for second place. Got it. But Lynch ain't going to just let him have it. Watch this. Watch yeah. this. He's going to come right back up under. Don't get into him now. Oh, what a great battle for second place. Meanwhile, Bernie Lamar continues to pull away. Ryan Moore, as we told you, said he was just sick of hanging out. Wanted to go race. What a race he's had. Boy, he's looking got on the fender. inside. Got, got the fender. fender underneath. And the red car is Scott Lynch. Moore makes his move and takes the lead. Lap car is coming up now. This could factor into it right here. Look at here. Scott Lynch is under him too, Mike. Ryan Moore has made the move. Here comes Lynch for second place. Bernie Lamar kicked all the way back to third. Ooh, There's car. the lap traffic. That is David Eshelman in the six. 61 is Brett Townsend as they go by. Wow. Great Boy. racing. Great Ryan racing. Ryan Moore picked his spot and made the most of it. And now the question is, can Scott Lynch catch Moore? Well, I like the way Bernie's battling back down in the bottom for third. I mean, he's hanging on there. Portgate's going to come up there and give him what for in just a second, but... He didn't, he didn't slide any further back than that. Ryan Moore, just 21 years old. We'll get what, down a to it. what a feature he, future he has in front of him. 15 to go. Let's take a look at the move for the lead by the 74 car. Just flat got off the corner better. Voila, there you go. Boy, with the help from DEI and just focusing on one car in that shop. This could be a car that's tough to beat in the Bush North Series this year. Ryan Moore, who did not win a race last year, but ran well enough that the folks at DEI signed him to a contract. He'll run some Bush Series races. He's doing some testing for them. He's going to be testing next week. Scott Lynch back there in that eight car, the 08 car, knows that he's only going to get one good chance to get around a 74. And he's, the, he's back there riding right now 
He's watching the 74, and he's trying to figure out where that 74 bobbles the most on the racetrack because he knows, Mike, he's only got a few laps if he can hang on to him to try to make that move. I don't know if you saw him, but Scott Lynch bobbled a little bit himself. He lost did. a little ground just a, a lap ago. Now he's got to fight and catch back up. And the laps are running out. Like I said earlier, the guys that hung the lights around this one-mile racetrack here at Phoenix International Raceway did a great job. Oh, it's been a beautiful night. Absolutely great. gorgeous. The pictures of these cars are just so crisp and so neat. Both Ryan Moore puts another lap on Mike David, and he saw him signaling to go on by. Not going not gonna to be a factor in the race outcome here. That's good sportsmanship on Mike David's part. Also got to give a call to the crew chief on that car, James Lorfano. Been a long time crew chief for Kelly. As we said, they've consolidated down now to just a one car operation. Boy, can you tell the difference? Yeah, I think Bernie may not be completely done here. I just don't know if Bernie Lamar can get back up and give Scott Lynch any kind of a race for second place, but yeah, Ryan Moore's got a hot rod. Coming up on 10 to go now. Ryan Moore's lap times have fallen off just a little bit. So have everybody else. Like I said, Scott Lynch knows that if he can get back to the bumper of that 74, he'll have one chance to get around him. And the lap car slowing down the leader right there as you watch Bernie right behind these guys, but the lap car just slowed the leader down quite a bit. That's Jack Sellers in the 75. A veteran driver out of Sacramento, 21 years in this series. Sellers running back in the 18th spot a couple laps down. Right now, Scott Lynch is thinking, smooth, smooth, smooth. Don't slide these tires. Let me get every inch I can without getting this car sideways. There's more, again, kind of got sideways there, Mike. Like you said before, catching him is one thing, passing another. Bernie Lamar now running third. Horton Gay is fourth. Here we go, here we go. He's gonna get his chance. Right here, the L8 got him sideways off the corner, Mike. Well, you saw the bobble there from Ryan Moore and Scott Lynch, who won here in October. Lap traffic comes into play. That is Rick Craig in the five car. And lap traffic helps Scott Lynch, but what a great move by Lynch. It's not the over 2003 yet. champion in this series. It's not over yet. Let's see what Moore's going to do once he has a chance to cool his tires down a little bit. He's going to come right back at him. Oh, great racing here in the final laps. Scott Gaylord, the lap car in front of him. Scott Lynch has got a great eye for figuring out where I need to put my car to get to get something done here in the closing laps of these races. Pat, we saw the same expertise, if you will, at Bakersfield and Mesa Marin. Scott Lynch trying to win now two races in a row in this series. Car doesn't have a sponsor. It's just unbelievable to me that somebody's not involved with that race car as good as it runs every single week. I asked him, I said, you going to Stockton, our next race on the schedule? He said, yeah, but we're just about done. We're going to have to get some help to make it work. And look at this guy. He goes all the way from the back on the start, and he's right here about to get himself another checkered flag. We're not giving it to him yet, but great run from Scott Lynch. He's putting some distance now on Ryan Moore. You're right. What a shame that there's not a sponsor on that car. As well as he's run. Lynch, who finished 10th in January here. We told you he won the championship in his rookie season. Now five laps remain. Ryan Moore is having a tough time catching up to him. Well, if he is lucky enough to go to Victor Lane, I hope Candace will ask him just about how bad a race car he had. Because, I mean, he was all but crying in his truck about how bad that 08 car was. So 
Sometimes all that hard work pays off. Well, they said they made a bunch of changes to it, and I, everything, from springs to shocks to whatever. We got slow car on the bottom there, put some, oh, and we got some, oh man, I saw some debris. There's a tire ripping apart on the 18 car. That's the young kid, Andrew Lewis, 18 years old, out of Corona, California. Oh, and are we going to get a caution flag here? Let's see what's, what NASCAR is going to do. They got debris on the racetrack back there, but it is, it is it in the group. Yeah, here comes the caution. Yellow's out. So it's Scott Lynch, Ryan Moore, Bernie Lamar, Steve Portengay, and Spencer Clark. That's your top five. And we will have a green, white, checkered finish here in the Arizona Casino 150. This is going to be exciting. Everybody's got to be real careful right now. You want to get locked onto that bumper in front of you. But if anything hiccups, we could have ourselves a, a big wreck here. Let's see what happens. Green is out. And Lynch gets a pretty good jump. Good start for Lynch. Bernie Lamar on the outside of Ryan Moore. Wow, this could be good right here if these guys can get to the bumper of the 08. Bernie Lamar is going and the yellow is back out. Caution is back out as the five car got turned around there somewhere. Rick Craig. He's been near trouble a lot tonight. Craig out of Draper, Utah, so you know what? I we'll do it all over again. Green is back out. Ryan Moore gets a better jump that time. He didn't spin the wheels that time. Bernie Lamar again going high. He opened the door for Portengate down there on the bottom. He may have a hard time getting back in line. Well, he did. He hustled back down there. White flag will be displayed this time by. And Lynch is doing a good job right now holding him off. Ryan Moore's about got him, though. Ryan Moore's going to be tough down in the corner. Moore side by side with it now. He's got the inside line, and Moore has got the lead. Ryan Moore takes the lead on the white flag lap. It's not over yet. Lynch has got a good run on the outside. He got a nice run off that corner, and he may be able to stay, hang on to him on the outside here, Mike. And look at the 33 on the bottom. Three wide, and here comes Bernie Lamar. Lamar out in front as they head to the finish, and it's going to be Bernie Lamar. Unbelievable finish. What a great race. Bernie Lamar stayed dead focused on what was going on in front of him, saw one hole to stick it in when the two guys got together up front, and what a drive by the uh, number 33 driver. I think all three of those guys should be commended. How about that, Harvick? What do you think of your driver now? As you see some guys from There's the Delana Harvick down there. 29 team in the Nextel Cup Series celebrating. And Bernie Lamar will come to victory lane. Oh, not before he burns the tires off the rear end of that car. I'll guarantee you that. Pat, that's one of the best finishes I've seen in a long time in this series. Here it is again. Oh, what a job by Bernie Lamar going low. What happened is, is the white car and the red car were racing each other so hard that they ran their momentum, carried them up the racetrack. And when that happened, the 33 is in position. Now watch, they're going to get down the bottom of the racetrack. The momentum carries them to the outside. Here comes the 33 on the bottom with a nice smooth lap. And hang on, I'm going to try to get that checkered flag. But you know what? I still think it was just great racing there at the end. I think Bernie's having a little fun out there. I do. I do indeed. Winner here of the Casino Arizona 150. <laughs> Gatorade and water for everybody, huh? Yeah, that's it. I'd say he's excited. <laughs> Yeah, the tears are coming now, that's for sure. Let's get on that summer, man. That's great.
Well, let's go down to Candace Kruger. Okay. Candace. Bernie, what a move to go out there and take the checkered flag. Tell us about it. Oh, it's exciting. We, uh, I first got to thank Kevin and Elena for giving us an awesome team. These guys are awesome. My crew chief, Lance, uh, my whole crew, awesome job. We built this team like three weeks before Mason Marin, about a month ago, and it was awesome. They, uh, we had a, a good car there throughout the whole race, and I think I might have used a little bit of it up there. And uh, thank God that caution came out. We cooled the tires down and went for it. I tell you what, I think most of these guys thought you were done for the night, but you weren't finished. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we were really good on the uh, on the restarts and on, on the short runs, and then you know we sort of fell off in the long runs, and that's where they caught us. And I can't say enough, you know, HPS and Groninger for being here, and I know they're watching over there in a, in a, in a force bar over there in Fremont. We should guys be here. Awesome. Well, Bernie, congratulations to you. A great, very exciting race. Thank you. Well deserved. Woo! Mike. Thanks, Candace. Yeah. You know, and it's good to see a young driver get a win like that. And it, well deserved. What a great finish. Pat, let's take a look now at some of the final results here. Of course, Bernie Lamar. Scott Lynch, Ryan Moore, Steve Porton Games, Spencer Clark, just 18 years old in the top five. Dale Cordley ran a good race. Yep, Timmy Woods, top 10 finish. Jose Luis, good, good comeback from a big wreck a couple weeks ago. Andrew Myers, another youngster, gets a good finish. Look at the uh, rest of the uh, top 20 there. And Pat, as I said, I think it's one of the best finishes I've seen in this series in a long time. Once again, our winner tonight from Phoenix International Raceway has been Bernie Lamar in a thrilling finish. For Pat Patterson, Candace Kruger, and our entire crew, I'm Mike Hockwood. So long from Phoenix International Raceway.